Hello Phil Smashers, this is Ever Smash. So I recently beat Fire Emblem Three Houses and I made some really silly mistakes in my hard classic run through of the game. So here are some of the mistakes I did and why you shouldn't do what I did, because mistakes are bad. And this video will contain no spoilers as far as I'm concerned. So with that in mind, let's go. Number 1. Not training faith and reason together, and ignoring authority. To start, magic classes can learn both magic types. So learning faith as a mage not only helps you learn heal, which you can use to heal other allies, you can also learn other skills like warp if the student can learn warp. For example, the Ziffia can learn warp. Also, the advanced and master classes don't get any class specific skills, so don't stress about it. But note that if you want to have your female students be a Gamora, you, they need to learn both faith and reason. In the long term, you might want to consider investing into that regardless as a master class. For males, they can only go into a Dark Knight, which learns Reason faster, or a Holy Knight, which learns Faith faster. But ultimately, at that point, your weapon skills are high enough, so you don't have to worry about that much. But they also have other requirements like Writing and Lances that you need to learn for Holy and Dark Knights. There's also the Mortal Seven that requires Sword and Reason, so pick your poison. With Authority, you really need it as some battalions grant some absurd gambits that can stop enemy movements, place down burning tiles, bring enemies in closer, or behind said gambit user, and more. And old attack gambits can cause enemies to be distressed, which inflict heavy debuffs, and are a must when dealing with demonic beasts. Seriously, demonic beasts are spammed everywhere during the mid to late stages, and you definitely need those. There are many support gambits, one extreme notable one is Stride. You can get shred as early as the Saros Holy Monks, which are, I believe, a D-class authority battalion. They allow for 6 movement, or blaze, which has a massive AoE attack and deals a ton of damage. On top of that, all battalions can add a certain bonus to your units. Notable ones are physical strength, magic, protection, which is defense, crit, and resilience, which is resistance, to name a few. Number 2 is recruitment. Even with Byleth being a jack of all trades, Byleth can learn only so much without detracting a lot of resources from your own students' teachings. The main appeal of doing this is to have Balaf have the necessary stats you can use to recruit students, but you mustn't worry too much. Get to know what are the students you plan to recruit stat requirements, and only focus on one, on one of the following stats that the student requires, and build lots of relationship points with that student. With enough relationship built with that student, you can recruit them easier. It also helps to do lots of tea time, as you can both build relationships with the student, and you can also increase your charm, which helps reduce the stat requirements needed to recruit students. Support and charm are really key components to recruiting students as they also help bypass a lot of the students' required stats. For example, Felix needs speed and sword, and let's say you lack in speed. You can make up for sword as Byleth is proficient in sword, but in speed, you can just use charm and relationship built with Felix to help bypass that. Also, things like gifts, lost items, dining, chores, anything that helps to build relationship is important. Also, you can recruit students to be mission assistants. I managed to recruit Lizithia, Marina, and Lorenz in that order before the time skip. Number 3. Don't rest. Resting is a waste of time. Even if the Sword of Creator gets a 5 plus on its durability, you shouldn't rely on it so heavily. Resting can only become viable late game when you actually need to use a good bit of your Sword of the Creator. As in early to mid game, most weapons can do the job better. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be stingy on using this sort of a creator. Feel free to use it if you need to secure a kill. Number 4. Not forging rusted weapons. Rusted weapons can be iron, steel, all the way to silver, and, and or rare weapons. They are cheap to restore and they can be better than buying weapons straight from the armory. You can view what rusted weapons are going to become by pressing X on them. Number 5. Saving gambits and not using weapon arts, or using weapon arts too much. It's best not to hoard or save gambits till the very end of a mission. Gambits can become lightsabers if you need them in a pinch, but you shouldn't save them too often. I tended to save a lot of my gambits for more scarier enemies, but I ended up not using them at all together, and end up using a lot of weapon arts in return. I ended up using a lot of weapons and spamming lots of weapon arts. But don't get me wrong, feel free to use any weapon art to help secure kills, and don't be afraid to spend your resources as needed in order to clear a mission and making it so the mission is easier to complete, but don't go overboard and let it mess you up long term. There is a fine balance you need to strike for yourself. Hoarding items and not using them and having a bunch of silver swords in your combo is definitely something you don't want to do yourself like I did. Number 6 is the lightning round. Don't forget to use gardens every time you explore, plant, harvest, and cultivate as needed. Don't forget to visit the amiibo gazebo each time you explore. If you have scanned a fire emblem amiibo or any other amiibo, they give free drops every time you explore. Don't forget to sell your balloons. They are worth 1000 for a small one and 5000 for a big one. Be sure to check which students support with each other when doing group activities like choir, dining, and more. Don't forget to do choir. It's a one-time use per an explorer and it helps increase faith and authority and it helps increase 
bonds between either the two students or Byleth. Make sure to talk to your students you plan to recruit each month at least once. They may have dialogue branches that increase support if you answer them correctly. Don't forget to you do special events that are on the calendar. Fishing is a great example as they may grant fishes that can be sold for 1000 gold or more. And that's it for the video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this Fire Emblem 3 Houses video. If you enjoyed the video, please, please hit the like button and subscribe for more Fire Emblem 3 Houses contents and guides and tips and more. Share this video where you feel like it's most appropriate and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.